So we have the basic anatomy of the kidney, and now we're going to be looking at it both from the overall kidney point of view, then looking at a single lobe of the kidney, and finally looking at just the renal corpuscle, which is part of the nephron. Let's start with an overview. We've got this outer zone, which is called the cortex, and the inner zone, which is called the medulla. In the medulla, we will find structures called renal pyramids, and we also will find structures that are called renal columns. Urine is made between the cortex and the medulla, and it gets gathered here at the renal papilla by minor calyces, which join major calyces, which will join the renal pelvis, then finally the urine will be sent down the ureter to the bladder. Let's look at the path of blood flow through the kidney, starting with the larger blood vessels. The renal artery comes in, and it will branch into segmental arteries, then into these arteries here, and here, and here, which are called the interlobar arteries because they are arteries between the lobes. The interlobar artery is going to branch, and each branch makes a little arc over the renal pyramid. This, this artery is called the arcuate artery. It's named after the small arc that it makes over the top of the renal pyramid. From here, the artery is going to branch again and go up into the renal cortex, and this is called the interlobular artery. So the interlobar to the arcuate to the interlobular artery. Let's move to an enlarged section to follow the arcuate artery to the interlobular artery. From here, small arterioles will branch off. This is the afferent arteriole that's carrying blood into the glomerulus. The afferent arteriole into the glomerulus. Leaving the glomerulus is the efferent arteriole. It's also cor correct to pronounce this the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole. From the efferent arteriole, blood will go into the peritubular capillaries. This module depicts the peritubular capillaries as if they're by themselves, and they're not. They're called peritubular capillaries because they wrap around the tubules of the nephron. After leaving the peritubular capillaries, it will be caught up into the interlobular vein, then going to the arcuate vein, and from the arcuate vein, let's go back over to the larger model, from the arcuate vein, it'll go down the interlobar vein to the renal vein. Now, let's look at the smaller structures that we see here in one lobe. Again, this is the renal cortex, and this is part of the renal medulla. This specifically is a renal pyramid. The dividing line are the arcuate artery and vein. And in here, we see the smaller blood vessels we discussed. And then, depicted here in white, we see the nephron and the collecting duct. The nephron has different parts. The part of the nephron that is the beginning of the nephron is Bowman's capsule, and it's also known as the glomerular capsule. And it is a catch basin for the fluid that is being squeezed out of the glomerulus. From here, the first place that that fluid that left the glomerulus is going to go is the proximal convoluted tubule. It's called proximal because it is connected to Bowman's capsule, and it's called convoluted because it has this whirly gig sort of shape. After the proximal convoluted tubule, we have the descending limb of the nephron loop, then the ascending limb of the nephron loop. Then we have the distal convoluted tubule. You'll notice that part of the distal convoluted tubule actually comes quite close to Bowman's capsule, but the fluid in the distal convoluted tubule has already gone through the nephron loop and is about to go into the collecting duct. 
Here, the distal convoluted tubule will deliver fluid that's forming urine into the collecting duct. And the collecting duct starts at the renal cortex and travels through the renal pyramid. And there are many different distal convoluted tubules that are contributing fluid to the collecting duct. Let's look at an even more enlarged section of the renal corpuscle. This more enlarged section, we can see just Bowman's capsule. This is Bowman's capsule. This is the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule. And here we see the afferent arteriole that's bringing blood into this globular capillary bed called the glomerulus. And here is the efferent arteriole that is taking blood away from the glomerulus. The glomerulus in this model has got one side where the glomerulus, the capillary bed, is naked. And on the other side, we can see the capillary bed is covered with these yellow cells. These yellow cells are called uh, podocytes. And podocytes are the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule.